Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to create this studio production clock uh, that you see here behind me. It's actually constructed mostly out of components uh, within vMix itself. Uh, we also use some data sources, we also use uh, RSS feeds, and we also use the vMix API in order to bring in a lot of this information that you see. Um, what inspired me to put this tutorial together was uh, an advertisement I saw. And the advertisement was for this product right here. And I thought, you know, this would be pr something pretty cool to have in the studio as uh, something that I could use during the production uh, just uh, to keep me uh, up to date on everything going on within the production of the live stream, the recording, the replay and all that. And I thought this would be something really nice to have. And I was going to purchase it. Well, when I went to purchase it, you have to purchase a subscription in order to use the software. And that's not something that I'm willing to do at this point. Um, I don't like subscription-based software products and I do not use them, but that's just me. I guess someday everyone's going to go to that model because it's probably the most profitable one and I'll have to get on board with it then. But as of right now, I'm sticking to my guns and uh, I'm not willing to pay a subscription to use that software. Now, to start off with, I went to GT Title Designer, and this is the layout that I built in GT Title Designer. It's very straightforward. I've done many tutorials on how to build graphics in GT Title Designer. Basically with this, all we're using is the ABC to create text boxes, the program output, uh, the placeholder for the time here, Anything that you see text-wise that's in blue, these are all uh, made with the ABC text block. The other thing we use is this right here where we create rectangles and then we go and shade those rectangles. Uh, that's what I did for these shapes uh, within this layout. And then the other thing that I did was I brought in an image of my One Man Stream logo. And I did that by using this right here. Uh, which is the uh, image import. It was very straightforward. It's very easy to do. But if you're new to uh, vMix GT Title Designer, uh, I would suggest that you watch the video that just popped up in the lower uh, left-hand corner uh, of this video. So I'm just going to show you the kind of the lay of the land here, what's going on. And to do that, I'm going to go back to our main production. Now, this right here, it's noted as program output. Well, I didn't want the program output to come in in this field and then go on to infinity. That, that can be kind of distracting. So what I did just for this tutorial is I changed this element from being program output to program preview. So now, anytime that I have something in preview, as you can see right now, I have the whole thing in preview. So just know for the purposes of this demonstration, this is, this is actually not the program output. This is the program preview, and I only did this for demonstration purposes. Uh, I just do wanna go ahead and say right now that this template will be available at our website, uh, onemanstream.com. I'll have this available for free, and you can download this if you're interested in building a studio production clock. Uh, for yourself. Now, this tutorial that we're doing today is just going to cover uh, the layout of it and what uh, the different uh, items or the different elements within this are. We're going to do a subsequent tutorial and then I'm going to show you the actual workings of it, how you add the data sources and a few other things. But let me just show you what's going on right here. Right here is the clock. This is actually telling us uh, what the current time is. And then underneath of it here where it says January 4th, uh, 2026, this is actually showing the current day. Now to the right of it where it says countdown to show, this is a countdown clock that I created and I actually created it uh, within vMix itself and I'll show you how we do that in subsequent tutorials. And over here, it brings you up to date with the different things that's going on within uh, your production. Right now it's showing record as being true. I am recording. And if we go to this look right here, you can see right up here, we have the record uh, button is on. So over here where it says record true, you can see that we are indeed recording. Now I've also set up a stream. And if I click the stream button down here, you're also gonna be able to see where this stream button goes to true as well. So let's go ahead and start the stream. And you can see up here where the stream starts. And you can see over here where it now is telling us that our stream is indeed 
going on. You also notice that when I started the stream, it started this countdown clock here. I have one for the stream time and I have one for record time. We've been recording almost seven minutes now and the stream we just started about 23 seconds ago. So that, that is these two clocks right here. And I did that by using something within vMix. Let's see if this will work. I'm going to click on this. And what I did is I created a production clock as an input. So I have one, which is streaming and two, which is recording. I created an input. I just clicked create input. And when I did, it brought in this right here. So you can see that we have two things here. We have, this is how long it's been recording and this how long, is how long it's been streaming. I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. And you can see where this one now goes to white, but our recording is still clipping along and that is because we are continuing to record. So what I did is I just brought this in as a layer on this main thing right here. This is our main template right here. So all I did is I, I click on the cog right here and it brings this up and then we go to layers. You can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six different things that I brought in over top of the graphic that I created in GT Title Designer. This right here, the clocks, the seven clocks on two and three, this is the one that says recording, and this is the one that says the streaming read readout. And then all I did is I went and I edited it and I uh, made it smaller. I cropped it some so that it would fit in these two places right here that I created in the template. So that's how these are being displayed. Uh, this right up here at the top, right here where it says January 4th, this is actually just a title that I created. If I right click on this and click on title editor, you can see where it's, it brings in this message text. This is probably something you could populate from an API. I just chose to do it this way because it was a little more straightforward and uh, I searched around for a bit and I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for uh, to bring it in as a data source. So I just brought in, uh, I just changed this title text here to January 4, 2026. And then it is reflected right here, January 4, 2026. This right here is static text. We made this in GT Title Designer to say countdown to show. And then this right here is actually just a countdown timer that I created, the GT Title Designer. And I did the same thing with that. I brought it in as a layer on top of this main template and then I cropped it to make it fit right here in this spot right here. For all this information here that we just talked about a moment ago, uh, the stream, the uh, record, and the replay, the information that comes in there, that comes from the VMix API. I'll show you how to do that next time. And then all this information down here uh, covers master audio. So we have uh, the master volume, which right now we have as being all the way up. Let me take it down a little bit and you can see how that goes down. As I talk lighter, you can see where these uh, numbers uh, get smaller. And as I talk louder, you can see where these numbers increase. Uh, right here, this says muted. It says false because we don't want it muted. But if I come over here and mute it, You can see where the two meters fell to zero and the muted changed to true. Now, all that again is brought in through the API, uh, I mean, through data sources uh, within the vMix API. I'll give you a quick look at that, but we are not gonna cover that uh, in this tutorial. We'll cover it in the next one. So let's go to this look right here. Go down to our hamburger menu. Well, first we're gonna have to get rid of me for a second. Go down to uh, our hamburger menu, click on data source manager, and you can see these are all the data sources that I've brought in. This one here, this uh, sports news, this is actually from uh, Fox Sports. I brought this in as an RSS feed. This next one, master audio, I brought this in uh, through the vMix API, and I've showed you how to do this before in a previous tutorial. That tutorial is now reflected in the lower left-hand corner 
uh, of this tutorial if you want to take a look at that uh, before we come back and uh, explain that to you on the next episode. But if you put this information in here, uh, just like it says, and then uh, manipulate the X path, you can get the exact information that you want. I did the same thing for streaming. Uh, it's the same URL, but it's a different X path. And then record again, same URL, different X path. Replay, same thing. And then local news. That one is actually from a local uh, uh, television and radio station here in Louisville, uh, WHAS 11. And I'm bringing in that information from their RSS feed. There are many RSS feeds out there. Um, uh, and many, many of them are free. Uh, all you need to do is uh, select the ones that you want and uh, bring them into uh, your production uh, through the data sources and then map it to your graphic. Now, uh, in the next episode, I'm going to show you how we map the graphic and how to bring in uh, all these different uh, data feeds. And uh, it'll be very straightforward and very informative. Uh, also, I did not want to leave this field blank right here. Um, so what I did is I just made this a scrolling field, scrolling text. Um, I thought after the fact that what we might be able to use this for is to let us know what um, uh, when we're taking our breaks or when different production elements are coming up or things like that. Uh, that is some, something that would be very easy to do. Uh, but right now what I did is I just created a scrolling text title uh, in GT Title Designer and then I populated it uh, with many of the fighters uh, that I do in the uh, different eight, um, in the different MMA uh, promotions uh, that I produce. So that's all this is. This is just scrolling text of fighters uh, because I didn't want to leave this information here blank. This can, can be really something that's very handy. It gives you all the information that you need about your production uh, at a glance. Uh, it'll let you know, um, as I said before, you're, whether you're recording or not, whether you're streaming or not, whether you have your replay on. I'm not sure if I demonstrated that or not, but let's go to Instant Replay. And then when I go ahead and turn the replay on, let's go to this right here. I'm going to go to, uh, this is the Instant Replay um, console, and I'm going to go ahead and click this right here to turn it on. And when I do, you can see where replay is now true, saying that we have the replay on. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off to save resources. And you can see now it goes to false. So if you like what we're doing here at One Man Stream, please give us a thumbs up and a like. Make sure that you do subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. If you haven't had the opportunity to stop by our website, that's onemanstream.com. That's where we have the graphics that we've created through this tutorial journey, as well as many of the vMix UTC controllers as well. They're just a few dollars a piece, but it is a way that you can help support One Man Stream. And as always, Thank you so much.